Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today it's back into our Bonsai Challenge, uh, PBE, <laughs> wow, easy for me to say, PBEM Challenge against Bonsai83, who is an excellent Japanese player, and will show you how to play the Japanese very effectively. One thing to do is come land in India as quickly as you can. Now, I'll say the last game that we played, he moved up the coast here, as most players will, most Japanese players will, straight up into Calcutta. This time, I did leave this unit here in Rangoon, which, uh, again, that's not going to be able to hold, but at least maybe we'll slow him down a turn as he's got to kind of turn around and take Rangoon here to get his supply situation set up um now he has landed in madras if i had to go back and do it again i would probably pull out of mangalore and come set on the shoulder at madras now why is that we've talked about this before i it may not have made any difference um but we talked about last time setting on the shoulder of units that you don't want to get surrounded now as you can see let me click on the map but as we get right up here we had a unit in Madras. It was actually a fairly strong unit for what we've got now. Um, Madras is the best landing spot for the Japanese in a lot of ways because it's a level four port. You can see right down here, level four. What does that mean practically? It means that he can support up to 80 strength just out of this port supply all nothing else even feeding into it now once he takes calcutta and takes all this rail that'll be a nine all the way down here he'll essentially have full supply um but he's not there yet so you know landing in madras is much preferable to landing in mangalore if you look at mangalore here it's only a level one port there's really no reason to hold mangalore and as i said if i had to do it again i would probably go set it over here on the shoulder would it have made a difference uh probably not i mean these units were strong enough with the bombardment and that's another thing that he does very well is he bombards or he brings in surface ships uh, that help when you do an attack like this. And so anyway, he's now, uh, you know, blasted this unit out of here. He didn't have enough movement points to get in there, but he will do that next turn. This unit, I think we need to get scrambling up here or maybe into Hyderabad. Sometimes I'll put it over here so that when he does take Cal Calcutta, we can run back down here, make sure, you know, we're just kind of keeping him from being able to link up this rail one or two turns faster in this case you know there's nothing we can do to stop him from taking madras uh we don't have uh, the indian units aren't strong enough we can't uh bring the british navy over here they're not strong enough there's nothing we can do about it all we can do is try to delay him a turn or two longer so that we can get British troops up here on transports uh, while we still have Bombay and Delhi. Uh, that's what it really, really all comes down to in the end, is still having Bombay and Delhi, this little corridor right here, try to get British troops up in here to reinforce, and hopefully you can hold India. But against a very good Japanese player, it's extremely diff difficult to hold on there. Um... Okay, so we've got Bombay pretty well fortified there. Uh, over in China, uh, I think we did a fairly good job of setting up here. He has pushed, and of course, he has isolated these two Chinese units. That's normal. You're, you're just never going to be able to get them out. They don't have enough movement points. They start in a terrible position. Now, you could leave them down here and maybe even try to attack into Fu Chao. I have had that work in one game, uh, but ultimately, these guys get trapped. Uh, we'll try to scoot them around this way. It's never going to work. He can always block us here uh, these units are not strong enough to bowl their way but we did get some of these units out and we put this really strong unit here which i think has sort of stymied him being able to get around us here at Changsha. now eventually he will take Changsha. Uh, but the longer we could delay here, the better off we are. I like to set up two different places. I like to set up Kunming and Chongqing. Uh, you know, by extension, that's Chengdu as well. But, you know, if he comes here and takes Chengdu, that is not really a great supply situation for him. This right here is the corridor. Just like in India, uh, you know, 
Bombay to Delhi is the corridor you're really defending ultimately. Now we're going to try to slow him down here, uh, but we got to make sure our troops don't get surrounded. He will be able to move very fast up here. Uh, luckily, we do have this rail line that you know comes around this way. We can come down into Delhi, uh, but we've got to try to slow him down just a little bit here. Uh, but we can't allow this to get up onto this rail line. That's a long ways for him to go. Uh, but if we do, if he does that, then these units also get trapped, and we've got to be very careful that that does not happen. Now, I, I have, in our previous game, I got a couple of units trapped out here, and it was really disastrous for the Indian defense. As you can see, uh, he has now got, you know, interdiction on the ports here, uh, Colombo. Uh, if he wants these, Colombo and Jaffna, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, he will take them eventually. They're cut off. Uh, there's just not, there's just nothing you can do about it. Uh, we'll turn this on. Now, you see here, we do have a level six port, but it's got to get port supply. It's not a main supply source. Uh, Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta are. Uh, you can see here, he didn't get into Rangoon this time. Uh, usually, I try to run this unit up and out. He Now, this will eventually starve out at this point, but it's going to take a couple of turns. Hopefully, that will just slow him down by a turn. That's all we're trying to do. Uh, Singapore, not a whole lot to do here. Oh, the question came up in uh, the forum. What is this yellow circle? This just means it's a level five or above port. It means this is where you can bring ships to get them repaired, if you ever wondered what that meant. Um, you know, he's taken the Dutch East Indies. He did not land in uh, Australia yet. That's coming. If we look up here at Moresby, uh, this is being interdicted. It's now, you know, down to two on the uh, number of turns of supply. Looks like he's just kind of going to let that starve out a little bit. Um, he did here come, come to Nomaya for some interdiction. He's got unknown ships in the area. So we really don't know what this is. It looks it's probably an invasion force of some sort, uh, but we don't know what it is yet. As you can see, we brought a lot of American stuff over here. Uh, we'll get to that eventually. Uh, this came through the Whirly Gig. This also came through here. The British uh, Navy uh, is now you know, going to base in Auckland. That's how I like to do it. Um, Tonga, okay, he's still interdicting there. Uh, we're bringing this uh, destroyer squadron down here to, you know, go at it with the submarines, maybe try to take out a uh, Japanese submarine. Same here, two subs, uh, two sub squadrons in the area. We're going to give this a shot and try to knock out a sub. If we lose a destroyer squadron, it's not the end of the world. We've got a lot of them and we'll have even more. And so, you know, I'm going to take a shot there and try to knock out a sub. It's being a little aggressive, but that's fine. Uh, we go back to Pearl Harbor. You see the situation there. Nothing really to do. I go into a turtle shell until we have transports. In some cases, you don't really have a choice. You just go into a defensive turtle shell and, and see what you can hold on to. Okay, we're being interdicted at more uh, we have no supply source at Nomaya. Uh, we have low supply at Wake. Okay, we may try to turn around or send out a destroyer squadron to Wake as well. Um, we have no supply source. We know that. And down in Tonga, uh, Pago Pago. But we're going to try to do something about that this time. Midway Island. Okay. Uh, his subs are pretty good at the start of the game. So, we'll, I mean, we'll see what we can take out and what we can't. We only get one operation point for this plane. We can't do anything with it. There's no place to move it to. We're going to try to bomb that unit and take out something if we can. Sometimes you do get lucky and, you know, uh, knock out one uh ship squadron of his. Uh, these guys are isolated. We already knew that. Uh, Singapore is isolated. It's got no way of getting supply. He's taken the three bases you have to to cut off supply to Singapore, uh, so that will eventually starve out. Uh, Rangoon, Jaffna, Colombo. Uh, he did take Madras, and we've got some partisans. Yay! Let's look at... Uh, actually, let's go read uh, the turn report. Uh, the messages this time. Oh, I guess I was already on it. Um, with Kuala Lumpur, and this is what I was talking about, Kuala Lumpur, Bandar Lampung, and Saigon in Japanese hands, supply to Singapore, Kota Baru, and Chumpton is cut off for the Allies. This, again, is to kind of recreate what happened historically. Allies deliver resources to China via the Burma Road because we still did control uh, Rangoon and Lado this turn. 
Japan invades India. We saw that. India's Madras naval base force was shattered. Okay. Uh, Yorktown, Saratoga, and two destroyer groups are ready for action. That's excellent. Uh, Enterprise, Lexington, two cruiser groups and one destroyer group arrive at Pearl Harbor. Okay. We've got our carriers, all four of them. Uh, one word of caution, and this case has come up in the comments before, and I, so I just wanted to talk about it since I'm, I'm trying to play this at kind of a, you know, medium to advanced level. Uh, the question came up, hey, you know, why not be more aggressive with your carriers in 1942? Because historically, actually, the U.S. was, right? I mean, uh, Midway and, and whatnot. The, the Allies really got fairly lucky at Midway. I mean, they cracked the Japanese codes. That never hurts. Uh, but they got really lucky. Uh, they, the, the U.S. carrier fleet was in no position to be fighting at toe-to-toe, -to -toe, mano -y mano with the Japanese carrier fleet, uh, and that is represented in this game. Do not get in a carrier fight with the Japanese in 1942. Uh, it is a recipe for disaster. Now, in my last game with Bonsai, uh, I got in such a difficult shape in and around Australia, I did bring my carriers out in late 42, and they just got mangled. Uh, they really did. You are going to get carriers later on uh, in, you know, 43 and 44, but you've got to let your carrier operations at least get up to a 1943 level uh, for them to be effective against the Japanese at all. But sitting at 1942 level uh, in your advancements, just not going to do it for you. Uh, Colombo, Garrison, okay, I mean, we've kind of looked through all this, right? Uh, he's attacking some merch out here. You got one merch marine, it seems, in the West Bay of Bengal. All righty, uh, okay. Forces, you can see, uh, yeah, of course, at the start, uh, the Japanese have 200 merchant marines, only 10 escorts. That's another thing I would say on an advanced level. Uh, just sit on your subs all through 1942 as the Allied player. There's no reason to send your subs out just to get mangled. And they will. They will. They're just not good enough. You've got to wait till the January 1943 turn when they finally really figure out most of uh, the the uh, torpedo issues. Then you send them out as a wolf pack. Um, so really, in 1942, just have your subs sit at either Pearl Harbor or Auckland and sit there. <laughs> I was going to try to think of a better way to say that. There really is no better way to say it. Uh, what do we have for, you know, uh, losses? Well, we've got four land losses and eight naval for the Brits. Uh, U.S., uh, 25 naval. Uh, China, nine and five right now. Uh, Japan, eight and five. Okay. Uh, Dutch East Indies has already surrendered. India now has 23 land losses. Let's go to the deployment screen. The Deroiter is ready to deploy. Do, 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 do. Um, and of course you have to do that down at the uh, UK African bases and so we'll put the Deroiter in there and we'll actually take it up and through the Whirly Gig. I, well, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, so let's click off here for a second. We'll actually put him on Raider mode because uh, we don't want him to be spotted, if possible. Uh, we're going to take him this way, and we'll put him in at Auckland eventually, right down the bottom of the map. Okay. Um, now then, let's deploy what the U.S. has. We uh, saw Yorktown, Saratoga. They will be ready, actually, to deploy next time. Uh you know, we, we got a couple of carriers this time, but th those will come on next time. It's only the 20, December 21st turn, uh, as you can see. I mean, there's nothing to put on the map. Um, down here, we did get the two carriers activated. The Lexington and the Enterprise will just sit here. We've got all of these battleships. Now, sometimes I'll take these battleships and put them in San Francisco. I actually think that's maybe a bad idea. And the reason is, is it eats up oil. And early in the... Now, eventually, you are absolutely awash in oil as the allied player i mean you've got like 1400 points of oil um 
but early in the game, you really don't have much. So, you know, I used to always take these battleships that have been damaged and I went and put them back in San Francisco. But really, what's the point? They may as well sit right here. Uh, I kind of guess I did that because that's what I do in war in the Pacific AE. I float them back to San Francisco where there's a bigger repair uh, repair yard. But here it doesn't matter. They're in a repair yard uh, and it's a level nine, uh, about as good as you can get. So they may as well just sit here. All right. So there's nothing really to deploy with the U.S., uh, Soviet Union, okay, uh, China, obviously not, uh, Australia, obviously not, Canada, Communist China, India, again, that'll be March 1st, we can't wait, New Zealand, the Philippines, nothing else to do there. Let's go to the combat log and see everything that happened last time. Now, we've already seen the uh, partisan activity, land combat, so he attacked uh, right here, and we did have to retreat out of here. We lost one point and retreated. Uh, we had the invasion of Madras here. He took no losses, it appears. Another invasion, so these, you know, these transports dropped off here. This is probably a light carrier force. We'll go look at it. I'm not exactly sure that we have detection enough to know. And then he just shattered this unit at Madras. Again, in retrospect, I wish I would have brought this unit from Mangalore over here because if he lands at Mangalore, he can only supply and support 20 strength points of units. You know, take Mangalore. Yeah, it's not going to hurt you really. Uh, and so move this over here. But as is, I think what I'll do is move this up first to Hyderabad. Um, maybe even back here over at Lucknow. We've got to keep him from just flying up the coast here. We also don't want him to go this way. So I guess maybe on the rail, we could take it uh, right here potentially uh, as the first step. Now that unit will get bullied. Uh, you know, he can support both of these fully uh, with 80 strength points. This at most is 60, right? He's at, at most, he's got 30 and 30. It's probably 20 and 20 or maybe even 10 and 10. All right, so for the current turn, well, again, we have partisan activities. Uh, that's always fun more partisan activity. Supply interdiction on Madras, that no longer matters. Uh, convoy attack into here. Um, we didn't lose anything there, but we did lose it into here in the West Bay of Bengal, and then another convoy attack up here. Okay, um, excellent. Let's go to, nothing to do on the war panner, panel. Panner, uh, panel, yeah, okay, assault troops, that's all we're going to try to build for the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, the U.S. also, we're doing a little breakthrough, uh, the armor. I used to not do any armor at all, then I realized how just very powerful those mechanized cores are, especially flying around in India or Australia, uh, and so let's uh, go ahead and do a two on those. We got some escort fighters, eventually these come in very handy uh, in 1944 and into 45 we're actually going to be trying to build a lot of fighter bombers this game uh or close support those are the two uh these i are kind of like my interceptors uh these are the actual tactical bombers uh you've got to do some strategic because it becomes much you know very important later escort and strategic kind of go together uh a little bit of naval and anti-sub that helps your carriers as well right large warships and warships of course we want these to get better we Really, I mean, I'd love to have these cranked up to a four, but we've got to make our subs a little better anyway, and we want our amphib operations to crank down. Eventually, when we get this to 1943 level, we can kind of take this off uh, of three and reallocate. Uh, we also get a few new research centers as the game goes on. Soviet Union, we just leave the same. China, assault, anti-tank interceptors. That's pretty much how you should always do it. They're not going to be doing any amphib operations. You may find that crazy. Um, okay. Now what? Now what he says? Well, we could look at our convoys. Oh, I did set a convoy up uh, offline last time, which is what I did is I upped my convoy from the U.S. to the U.K. Then I had the U.K. send to India. Um, why is that? Well, you do want your Indian assets trying to upgrade at least uh, or repair it could come in handy to get one repaired and so really this is being financed by the u.s the u.s is sending in 25 production to the uk the uk is then you know moving 16 uh, more uh, on on its way so we've got uh, escorts in the three lanes that we're trading in these are the main two indian and south pacific of course this goes into australia this goes into india west bay of bengal we've got a few out there because we have a few extra um 
but really that's going to be cut off very shortly. I was hoping, hey, you never know, you could potentially hurt a sub or something out here with those. Uh, U.S. sending out to U.K. and sending Australia. I keep these on about 25, uh, and early in the game you can't really do a lot of oil. Later on we'll be shipping a lot of oil to the U.K., uh, but for now 25 and 1. Uh, as we have a little, well, we do have a little more available. Let's send one and uh, like five. Is that right? Let's do six and one. Uh, nothing I just did there was, uh, uh, you know, mathematic. I'm just making that up. But six and one out to the Kiwis, uh, they do need a little bit. Uh, they, they need some oil. They need some production. Let's get it out there to them. Six and one. Uh, so the U.S., you know, just cranking stuff out here. 54. Oh, I guess I made it 61. I should probably make that five and one then. Let's do that again. Well, to Australia is 26. I should really make it 35. So let's do nine total. Uh, so I guess I will do eight and one. Okay, that works. Uh, create your trade. There we go. Eight and one. And that'll have 35, meaning we really need seven escorts out in that uh, Australian South Pacific lane. Uh, but we'll we'll just keep 10 there. We may as well. Um Okay, so that's that trade, and that's the only trading we really have going on. Build queue, uh, UK got 147 now on the stockpile. That should allow us to build some transports. Uh, we'll come back to this, though. Uh, US, 193. Now, we did do a lot of upgrade and upkeep this time. I think uh, really through March, you should do nothing but upgrade and up. Uh, upkeep and build transports and landing ships. You've got enough other stuff and you'll deploy a lot more of it. Uh, just get these things up to snuff and get a way to get them around the map. Uh, Soviet Union 32, okay, 89 on the uh, Chinese. Now, the Chinese for a new army need 180. Uh, so we got a long, long ways to go. Now, you could do all reinforcement and upgrade. Uh, I like to do about half. Now, I know some people will say, well, you know, you should do more, but you have the opportunity to build quite a few new Chinese units if you can get to that point. So it's a, it's a, a knife's edge here. I mean, it's real yin and yang is like, well, you got to get to that point. So you need the reinforcement and upgrades. If you get to that point, uh, you want to have a stockpile. You want to be cranking out some new units. Now, they don't have much experience and they don't upgrade very fast. You, am I talking myself out of this? Probably. I just did. I'm going to 46 <laughs> after all that. Stockpile 50. We could build landing craft with the Aussies, but the Aussies, I really like to build an infantry division because you kind of need one or two more. So we're going to keep letting this uh, increase and we'll do this with the Canadians now they have no upkeep they produce seven every time when they get up to a 25 we'll build landing craft with them they don't have much in the way of logistics of course uh, if they get to a hundred we'll try to build um, now see you can see their shipyards already taken uh, up We'll try to build a, a transport craft out here as well. Uh, Communist China, of course, that kind of speaks for itself. 62 for India. Didn't quite get all the way up to where we needed it. Now, we do have stuff coming into India. Uh, we could try to crank that up a little bit more, but I don't think, you know, you can see the Brits could send out eight more to India if they wanted to. Right now, they're sending 16. Uh, I always go back and forth on this. Let's go ahead and have them send all 24 to India. It could end up just being completely wasted. If I can find India. Whoa, there we go. Um, let's go ahead and we'll do it with the uh, shift. So you get all 24. Uh, we'll send one oil. Now the UK has no oil essentially, uh, but we'll go ahead and recreate that trade. Uh, you, you know, Getting an extra unit or two in India can slow him down another couple of turns. Uh, reminds me, let's go back to the U.S. and look at this one more time. <sighs> 25 and 1. You know what? Let's make this 55 and 1. I always go back and forth. I don't know that there's an ideal way to do it. Uh, let's do 50. 55 and 1 out to the Australians. 
um, and try to get them as much as we can while we can. Now, eventually, that'll be closed off. The Australians also don't have a ton of log logistics, so, you know, they build very early on, and then that's it. So, you know, let's go ahead and stuff them full. That's fine. Um, okay, now what do we want to do? Well, let's move some units. We'll get back to the build queue in a minute, uh, probably at the end of the turn. Let's go up to Mangalore. All right, and we want to get this unit on rail and do something with it. Do -do -do -do, what are we going to do? Um, let's initially put it here. Now, this unit's a... Uh, is that true? Um, Mangalore is not worth keeping. It, I mean, let me back up and say this. With the, with the lack of units you have early in the game, Mangalore is not worth keeping eventually you know uh, it has its uses but at this point in the game it's not worth keeping that's why i said i wish i would put it over here at least made that landing a little harder um now the one argument against that right is he's going to immediately get the rail into mangalore and then you know that ups his supply let's look at the logistics all right, as you can see, the nines are coming down uh, from, you know, our main supply sources. He does not have that. He'll only have port supply. This will add another 20 strength that he can put in against us. Uh, but let's go ahead, I guess, and uh, we could go here and start trying to back this up uh, to help over here. You could go either way. You could back him this way so he's on a rail line and can help anywhere. Or you could, you know, he's still on a rail line here. Uh, you just don't want him to, to move up this way. Let's go into Hyderabad with this unit. I think that's what I'll do with it. Uh, these units will just sit and continue to try to dig in as fast as they can. Now, ultimately, let's put that on a priority. Uh, we've got Wavel out here. He's a 10 of 10. This is only a 4 of 10. Um, you know, this is a full core at Bombay. Question whether we should break that into a 20 and a 10 and put another unit there. I think that's what I'll actually do. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I would have rather he kicked out over here, but that's fine. 20 and 10, now that's only a 5 at this point. Next turn, we'll move him down here and let him start trying to dig in. And that makes his landing a lot more difficult here. All right, we've moved this unit back. We'll move this unit over. Now, over here in this situation, um, let's take off the logistics very quickly. Uh, we are going to let him go ahead and take Rangoon. Uh, there's not a whole lot we can do about it, right? You know, I say let him. <laughs> that's kind of a misnomer. Um Let's go ahead and move this unit back. How far can we get this unit? He can't go very far this turn. Uh, this unit can. He is not on the rail line, so he's just going to come back here. Let's get this unit back here and have him start digging in. This is a very important hex. It's jungle, so you get 1.3. It's across the river, uh, and so let's get him back here as fast as we can. I also like to take this hex as well, and then I'm, I'm here, and then I'm also here, uh, so he can't go up and around us. Um, put him on the rail. He's only a 3 of 10 at this point. Uh, this is a 1.3. This is a 1.3. So let's put him there. Let's put him there. This unit... Uh, if we can get him up there, is going to go sit either here or here, okay? And that's how I like to play up in this area. Now, you may say, gosh, you're not really defending Calcutta that strongly. Um, I hear you, but ultimately, uh, this, is, this is it. You know, we got to protect Bombay. Uh, we now pulled back here. Uh, you leave this at Rangoon, and this is what you've got, you know. And so this can go back on rail to Delhi. We've got this, you know, trying to protect this as much as we can. I maybe sometimes will absorb this into this when we get that March 1st unit, but we don't have it yet. So what are we going to do? Um, this is that 10 of 10. I actually wouldn't mind to have these switch places, but I don't. It, once he starts to dig in, 
I want him dug in. Um, okay, uh, the air unit we actually will put in Calcutta for now. That, that does use a little bit of our oil, but it's only a one. We've got it on full support against naval. If he tries to land any transports around here, hopefully uh, we'll get a shot at him. Okay, uh, you can also, like last turn, He's got a range only of six. He starts up here. You can't get him down here to try to interdict these landings. You can also take this air and put it in Bombay to try to interdict any landings over here. So just some things to keep in mind. Um, Okie dokie. Now then, so we've really moved all of this. I don't think there's a whole hell of a lot uh, left to do there. Uh, let's go up into China. All right. Um, and let's continue to kind of build this defense out. Now, I like to have this unit here. Uh, we're in the town of Yu. I always like to say uh, say that. Uh, <laughs> it's the town of Yu. Okay, sure. Uh, this unit now, uh, I will bring back here to uh, this, you know, mountain hex. Now, we don't want to allow him to get around us. And so, actually, this is a one point. You know what? I, I just changed my mind on the fly. We're going to leave these guys right here as they are for a turn. For a turn. Um, this is set up fairly okay. Uh, we'll, you know, bring him back eventually to be behind this river. Uh, maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll bring, you know, some of this back. For, but for now, they're under no real threat. And they're, they're not allowing him to flank us here, which is very important. Now, this is only a 10 of 30. There's a 13 of 30. I mean, these are just not strong units, right? 15 of 30, 10 of 30. Uh, they're also not dug in. And so, you know, how much good are they actually doing? This is a 23 of 30. We're actually, uh, he's not completely dug in yet. So we're going to switch these two. Uh, this is not, you know, entirely that strong. And so we're just going to switch these two. What would an attack look like there? See, we don't even get odds there as hard as that is to believe. Um uh, but it's because it's across the river. But now we've got our two strongest units here. Uh, 13, you know, these units can get absolutely mauled, but there's not a whole lot we can do about it. We've just got to keep, uh, you know, slowly moving back. 1.1, this defense is 1.3, so that's quite good. We actually could move this one back, I guess. And then we'd have him, you know, if he wants to move in there, he's, he's getting surrounded on four sides. I uh, sort of like that. I don't want this to get triply surrounded. Um, so let's actually move him back just one. Uh, he gets the same defense. I like to make triangles where I can. So ultimately, I would like this unit to be here probably. Uh, or we could have moved this over so we've got a triangle. Um, this is a strong triangle or as strong as we can make it this unit will probably get mauled but there's just not a whole hell of a lot we could do about it we could move this back and move it around but we're not going to do that flying tigers are up to 8 and 20 okay uh this unit here he's in a 1.1 he's not dug in yet so let's just is that what i want to do i ask you as if you know uh, let's look at the logistics out here. Yeah, that's only a one. Um, interesting. Okay. You know, he would have to attack across the river here. I like that. But it's only a 1.1 on defense. When I'm saying 1.1, I'm talking about this right here. Uh, this is the defensiveness of the hex. I think this looks okay. I mean, I don't think he can really push here and isolate. Um, or can he? You know, giving this guy a free river crossing, I hate to do that. We're set up on the river here. We could start to push out this way. Hmm. Let's do that. Let's push out a little this way. I guess if he wants to come up here, I mean, we still have a way to get out of here if we need it. Uh, we'll allow the cavalry to sit here for another turn. We do have this unit coming up the road uh, to help us back up in this direction uh, around Chungking. These guys are uh, not really under threat. Uh, they're up in the hills. They're not getting good supply, so their effectiveness is going to go down every turn. Just something to keep in mind because, you know, he's now cut this off uh, from a rail perspective. Um... You know, ideally, we would move these guys back into a better supply situation. 
but we all don't always have the benefit of ideal. Now he's sitting on a mountaintop. That's strong. Uh, this all looks kind of okay. Uh, not great, but it looks okay. I mean, we've got two damn uh, headquarters sitting out here protecting us. This stymied him a little bit, I think, in this area. Uh, we will continue to move this communist force over. Uh, we'll try to get him down to this supply if we can, and I'll actually move uh, the headquarters into this mountain. It's a little bit better. Uh, we could move him up to this five. I don't think he's going to push this way. Uh, we'll see. I mean, eventually he might. Uh, these guys, again, sitting in bad supply. I would love to move them back and put them in better supply. Uh, could I move, even move this unit down here? Not clear that that's any better than the situation I'm already in. Uh, let's continue to let those guys dig in. So I don't really think that there's a whole hell of a lot to do up here in China this time. Um, let's go look at the Philippines. All right. Uh, we're going to take a shot at the... Oh, let's take logistics off. Much prettier game when it is. Uh, let's try to do an airstrike there. Ah, we got nothing. Too bad. Okay. Well, these guys are running out of supply. We're just letting them sit. We're hoping they can hold on for a turn or two. Uh, that's really all you can do. We're still holding at DeVoe. We have no way of getting any other troops up in here. Uh, there's just nothing we can do about it. They're going to have to sit. Same with Singapore. Uh, this is all what it is. Now, uh, drink, by the way. We always joke and war in the East, too. When I say it is what it is, uh, that's our drinking game. Um... Okay, so these guys are moving. We already knew that. We've got all of these U.S. submarine squadrons that we'll be bringing around here uh, for this turn. We'll just put them into... Oh, I can't get all the quite into Adelaide. We'll put them into Port Augusta. And there he goes. And then we'll put uh, this one as well. Uh, well, we'll move him around here. Uh, how about Albany for him? All right, into Albany he goes. And then we've got the Brits here at Darwin. How far around here can they go? Uh, they can make it all the way to Sydney this turn, and then we'll put them over in Auckland. Uh, okay, so off to Sydney you go. That is the 11th Destroyer Flotilla and the Repulse. All right, so they can actually get a little better uh, there. The Hermes Revenge and Exeter. They go straight into Auckland and become part of this British naval force. Uh, we also have the Cornwall, which will go in there. This turn, we have a U.S. sub, the Grayling. Uh, we will also have this at Auckland. Uh, we have the 27th Destroyer, which we could potentially bring up here. Now, let's see if we get any indication. Well, this is unknown ships. Uh, this is one ship with a battle group. This is one ship. Uh, probably patrol craft or something like that. Now, we could go up here and try to mess with them. Uh, I don't really see the upside of that. Um, 7 of 20, we've got this on priority, so it's getting a little better. I would like to have a strength 20 here at Melbourne eventually. Uh, we just don't have that now. Now, this is 5 of 10. That's 3 of 10. Eh. Uh, we'll just leave that. Uh, we're into Newcastle. These are the hexes I like to protect here. I also would like to get another one off the shoulder if we can when we get a new unit. Now, wow, he's 2 of 10. That's not good. That's not good. I don't care about your math. Uh, 7 of 10, 8 of 20. Okay, we could make Brisbane a little weaker so that we're down here on top of Sydney. I mean, it doesn't matter if you hold Brisbane if you lose Sydney. So let's go ahead and move the one unit here, and then we will go ahead and break this one. I didn't want you to go that way. I want you right there. Okay, so he's to the south. Uh, he's off his shoulder. Uh, this should at least slow down a landing. And then right here at Sydney, we've got our massive forces. We need this to be stronger, bringing other things over here. Uh, 27th Destroyer, you're in here. And then we've got 17th and 14th. They're also in there. Now, we did get this uh, air unit over here, the new 4th and 5th Tactical Group. We'll put this in at Auckland. Uh, we don't want to keep using up that much oil, but we got to get the Brits uh, settled out here. Uh, these guys are just going to sit. Uh, we will be trying to build some more units before March uh, because ultimately you just can't lose New Zealand. Um, 
Okay. Now we were going to go try to do something offensive down here. So let's turn this to fleet mode and come in here on uh, the sub. Now he is next to Pago Pago, so we can attack him. Uh, and two damage on his subs. Excellent. Excellent. Now he may uh, move his carriers over there and just blast us out. That's all right. Uh, let's go to fleet mode. All right. We did one damage there. Come on, let's sink something. We did another damage, but nothing sunk. All right, so we've damaged a couple of his subs. I'm going to try to be a little more aggressive out here than I have been in our past games uh, because ultimately just letting him interdict here with no repercussions, uh, you at least want to make him think about it, you know. Uh, so that is that. Uh, nothing to do with any of these units. You know, we're, we want to maintain our oil. The Maryland will have getting better. It's bottomed here, but we've got, you know, a decent little force here. Next time we'll get our new carriers. Uh, these guys are just sitting here in uh, mainly in garrison mode. Let's turn him to garrison. Uh, this is infantry corps. He's at garrison. Uh, this should be at garrison. Uh, San Diego, you can't turn Marines into garrison. These guys, uh, let's put on full support and bomb naval, just in case something comes up near the coast. Uh, full support, bomb naval, that's how you want it. Uh, in San Fran, we're in garrison status. Astoria, we will turn to garrison status. Uh, and I think the same with Seattle. All right, so everybody's on garrison. Uh, we do have this destroyer squadron. Uh, that we could move out here. Let's go ahead. We'll put it on raider mode. Um, hold on. Let's see how many destroyers we have at Pearl Harbor. Uh, we'll eventually need a you know a bunch of those to go along with our carriers. We don't have that many. We don't have that many. So let's go ahead um, and move this destroyer squadron uh, out to Pearl Harbor. Uh, I, I've noticed in his games he doesn't interdict our convoy lines as much, and sometimes I wonder if it's even worth going after these, uh, because you end up get, going after uh, subs or other things in the convoy lands, because you end up losing your destroyers, and you really need those later to go along with the carriers. Okay, so I think we've done all of that. Let's very quickly move through our units, see if there's anything else we want to move. Okay, he moved as far as he can. Uh, this unit could move out this way next turn. That's what I want to do. Okay. Uh, the cavalry, I guess we could move up, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it here, I think. Uh, he's getting better supply here. All right, through China. I can tell you, he just played masterfully in China last time, and you can see where he's bringing the big mass of his forces here. Now, these are all very defensible hexes. Uh, can we defend it? Well, it's a great question. We shall find out. Uh, I actually maybe want to move... He's not dug in yet. Maybe move this unit here um, and, and switch places next time if we can. 15 of 30, 15 of 30. Uh, keep moving the communists down this way a little bit. Uh, I, 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 actually, I am going to move these guys. I said I wasn't, um, but now looking at it again, I think I will. I like him kind of here, uh, kind of blocking from both sides if we can. So let's move these guys around here to try to defend. Now he's going to come very strongly here. Uh, we need to get dug in. Mm. Let's... Let's see. Eventually, I guess I want the headquarters here. We'll switch places with these guys uh, next turn. Uh, you know, you don't want to be moving around too much. You've got to get these units dug in. But we're so early on here. I mean, they're just not dug in now. And it's, oh, I did want to do something else. And that is out here at Midway. Let's send one of our destroyer squadrons, if we can. Uh, so this... Let's see if there's a difference between anti-sub. This is a four. This is a five. Okay, well, I'm glad we actually looked at that. Um, what's this one? He's also a five. Interesting. Okay, uh, now he just moved in there. Um, let's take this one. Let's put it on fleet mode. Let's go out here. Uh, 
And let's try to hit this. All right, more damage. We're getting damage on the subs. I'm not sure if that's going to end up being worth a whole hell of a lot. It'd be really nice to sink one eventually. Uh, but okay, that's uh, that's fine. We'll go after him a little bit. Wellington. Oh, yeah, we got the Brits. Okay, Melbourne. Gosh, we need those to build up uh, really quickly. Uh, but I like, you know, our defense as well as you could like it when you're in such a bad situation at the start uh, in Australia. You know, last game I lost Australia. Eventually it was a hell of a fight, but uh, he comes in strong for it. Believe me. Um, yeah, I want him sitting here and I want him sitting there. Now they'll probably bust through here, but, uh, you know, ultimately there's not a whole hell of a lot you can do about it. You make him cross the river, uh, but you're just trying to slow him down again. Oh, we didn't move our headquarters. Now our headquarters can get up here and sit um, here. This would get everybody in command uh, and also help get everybody out if he does start coming up this way, we could also have the headquarters come down here or here, for that matter. So eventually, I guess I could have put this down here and the headquarters. Uh, let's put him on rail. Uh, just so he doesn't land at Calcutta, I'm actually going to put this here now, for now. Um, that's 1.1, that's 1.0. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's put him there for now. For eh, back that up. Let's get him off the shoulder. Um, maybe for now I should put him up here. He's actually our strongest force, or one of them. Now this is strong. That's ten. This is ten. These guys are only three. Okay, he's a ten. Um. Can you hear my brain thinking? Uh, for now, let's just put him there. That gets everybody. He's not quite in command, but he will be next turn. And we'll get him up here digging in as fast as we can. Uh, let's put this unit on priority. We have got to get this unit better. Um, he's not... Uh, gosh, you, I, you know, I hate to put everything on priority, but some of these we have just got to get built up. Now, these are not those... Uh, that are, you know, mission critical here. Uh, he's really not, but he's going to get attacked soon, so let's try to build him up. Okay, that all looks fine. Let's go to our build queue. Uh, UK sitting on 147. Uh, let's go over here. Let's build a transport, if we can, or shipyards. Do we have any shipyards? Not enough. All right, well, that'll tell you. Uh, then we need to build an infantry division, and we'll do assault 42. Uh, we could have built landing ships, but let's get an infantry division going um, as fast as we can. We'll actually bump reinforcement and upgrade up a little bit uh, since it was getting close. We've got 69. These cost 78. Uh, we could also go and build a landing ship then. That only costs five in shipyards, so let's purchase one of those. And there we go. All right, 44 left. U.S., uh, it's pretty simple. You're building transports. 100, 200, that's what we need. Let's purchase, do we have shipyard? Ah, see, we've only got eight. Man, they really handicap you at the start. Uh, we will build one landing ship here uh, because we do have enough shipyards to do that. Uh, but, we, you know, next turn we'll be able, able to build a lot of transports because those carriers will come off. Uh, but we can't do any more of that. That means 189. Let's go to infantry division, assault. Infantry Corps small is 144. I really don't like to build anything smaller than an Infantry Corps at this point. Um, we could also start thinking about, you know, other air units. We're going to be looking at buying some fighter bombers. Uh, 1942, they're a 9 air combat, 3 tactical. Those cost 325, though. You know, we'll, we'll be doing that later. So let's go ahead and build an Infantry Corps small and we've got 45 left not enough uh, shipyards to build anything logistically uh, the soviet union yeah they'll be building up 89 we already talked about this the chinese have to get to what 180 i think australians are sitting at 50 they also have shipyards you could build some landing ships here uh, we're actually not going to do that because the australians need you know 
new infantry division. So we got to when they get to 78, we'll build that. Uh, o Canada on 24, it's uh, got shipyards, so we'll be building transports with O Canada uh, as that builds up towards 100. Uh, Communist China, okay. I mean, we could have put this on full reinforcement and upgrade. Uh, they won't need it right at the start, but uh, eventually that will help. India. Uh, cannot build a unit yet, which kind of stinks. Uh, ultimately, I guess maybe backing this off and getting a unit started to build and then flipping this up on turn two maybe is ideal. I don't know. Um, it, it's it's one of those questions you probably have to play test a hundred times. Uh, nothing going on, obviously, with New Zealand yet, although uh, we will be building some Kiwi units uh, later on. And then the Philippines, nothing going on there. We'll go back through deploy. Okay, I think that's going to do it. I'm going to turn the turn back to him. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I mean, you can't make mistakes. Now he's landed at Madras in India. Could we have prevented that? Uh, maybe we could have made it a little harder by having a unit sit here. Now it's a very weak unit, uh, but at least he couldn't have landed here and gotten around Madras. Uh, so just something to think about in your future games. Anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have